The 5,000-acre Greenwood Plantation is one of the most treasured estates in America. For those who love land and conservation, Greenwood is regarded to have the largest remaining stand of privately held ancient longleaf forest. For those with an appreciation for design, the Annabellan Main House was declared the finest example of Greek revival architecture in America. And for those interested in outdoor pursuits, these lands are where the southern sport of quail hunting and wildlife management originated. We thank the Green Tree Foundation for allowing us to share Greenwood in this limited viewing video tribute. We invite you to join John Kohler and Associates in this celebration of everything held dear in the Red Hills region, all found here on one legacy property. Welcome to Greenwood. Greenwood Plantation was founded nearly two centuries ago by the Jones family, who were among the first pioneers to the area. These early settlers generated tremendous wealth forming these soils. Greenwood still stands strong today as a 5,000-acre modern-day gem of land conservation and preservation. Just before the turn of the century, wealthy northerners discovered the great climate and that the unique stretch of rolling red hills and vast pine forest were home to quail. At the same time, smokeless gunpowder was developed and the sport of wing shooting emerged. Soon, Thomasville became known as a grand winter resort. Over the last century, the numerous quail hunting plantations of the area have continued this wintertime tradition, drawing sportsmen to Thomasville from across the country and around the world. We have the largest concentration of big plantations in the south because of that 35 miles section between here and Tallahassee. It sits in two states and three counties, but it takes up only 35 miles, but it's all plantation, 330,000 acres. Albany has a few, but only a few. And South Carolina has a few, but only a few. Uh, we have 112. There's nowhere else like this in the world. There's no other large mass of contiguous plantations of like-minded philanthropists and conservationists that own land all almost in the common good for the benefit of wildlife propagation. Um, and that's important to be near other similar properties for the entire ecosystem. Here you have 300,000 acres dedicated to increasing wildlife, wild ecosystems like here at Greenwood, the longleaf pine, the wiregrass. Um, it's, there's no other place like it in the world. The past owners of Greenwood have been among our country's most affluent families, maintaining this plantation to be the best of the best. At no time since this land was founded did any owner succumb to the financial temptation of over-harvesting the vast natural resources of Greenwood. In this regard, there is no equal. It was those beautiful piney woods, lush gardens, moss-draped oaks, and grand architecture that made Greenwood a beloved retreat for the Payne Whitney family of New York and Cleveland for more than 100 years. Two of the Whitneys were listed among the top 10 wealthiest men of their time. John Hay Whitney, known as Jock, was an entrepreneur by nature. He started one of the first venture capitalist firms and pioneered color movie production. He had the vision to immediately buy the film rights for and finance Gone with the Wind. Jock's influence appears to have served more of an inspiration than Tara itself, as seen in this photo of the Atlanta premiere. Jock brought the film to Thomasville for the very first screening of Gone with the Wind at the nearby Melrose Plantation Showboat Theater. Prominent in social circles, Jock and his wife Betsy often invited their friends in politics and Hollywood to Greenwood. President Eisenhower enjoyed many hunts at Greenwood. In fact, his turkey is said to still hold the record as the plantation's largest. After the death of President John F. Kennedy, Jacqueline sought a peaceful refuge at Greenwood. This was the one place she could go and get away from the press, her whereabouts unknown until she was photographed leaving this little church in Thomasville. After her stay, she wrote thanking the Whitneys for their kindness. In her letter, she called it the house she loved more than any other she had ever been in, a paradise on earth. The lifestyle that these historic figures enjoyed at Greenwood awaits its next owner. 
It's incredible. We talk a lot about the history of Greenwood, but really the history is being made today for whoever buys this property. It's gonna be their history. The house was built by noted British architect John Wynne and was completed after nine years in 1844. Wynne built some of the most monumental plantation houses and only a few survive today. The property is on the National Register of Historic Places. Even Stanford White, one of the Gilded Age's most prominent architects, regarded it as the most perfect example of Greek Revival architecture in America. As far as Greek Revival mansions go, this is one of the best in the country. It's one of the great national treasures of the United States. On the evening of April 2nd, 1993, following the celebration and unveiling of a just-completed interior renovation by New York-based decorator Sister Parrish, Greenwood caught fire. Mrs. Whitney completely restored the exterior and stabilized the interior. And it remains like this today, a blank slate for the next owner to make it their own. But the main house only tells part of the Greenwood story. The existing buildings, from historic cottages built in the 1890s to the elaborate grounds where America's hybrid seed corn industry was born, are a snapshot of American history. Greenwood embodies Southern heritage and plantation lifestyle. It's a lifestyle right out of the movies. The lodge, at around 13,000 square feet, is the featured house along the private canopy drive of Live Oaks within the main campus of Greenwood. The craftsmanship of the winter stables is incredible. Even the 10-car garage made news in the 1920s when it was built for its $100,000 price tag, a small fortune back then. Life at Greenwood is morning horseback rides and afternoons spent among the giants in the big woods. It's enjoying the miles of frontage on the Oklahoma River and the 300-acre waterfowl habitat at Herd's Pond, which is the headwaters of the Oscilla River and an ecological treasure. Greenwood offers a mix of modern comforts and classic American pastimes. These lands ripe for peaceful solitude and hunting are in fact Greenwood's most valuable asset. Greenwood is best known among land conservationists for its very rare 1,200 acres of big woods. This is the largest remaining stand of privately held virgin old growth longleaf, the remnants of a forest that once covered 92 million acres of the south. Natural longleaf pine stands remaining today cover just two to three percent of their former range, and of that, Greenwood is the best of the best. Leon Neal has overseen the big woods here for over 60 years. He started early in his career consulting with Herbert Stoddard, the father of quail management and a founder of Tall Timbers. The two developed a system of forest management that mimics natural forest dynamics. The stoddard neal system of forestry has been the subject of many books and much research. There is no mistaking a forest managed by Leon Neal. And that's, that's the thing about this forest. Uh, it's a, an old age forest, but yet it's regenerating. And that's the key to the management. Nobody was cutting any trees out of here it, because of the aesthetics of, of the property, of this stand, you know, the beauty of it. And also, it's gotten more and more unusual every day. There's nothing like this as far as I know. Plantation owners share Mr. Neal's passion for the longleaf pine forest. After Mr. Neal's last meeting with Betsy Whitney before she passed away, she left him with some strict instructions. She said, well, I appreciate you coming over. And don't forget, you take care of my trees. That's exactly what she said. You take care of my trees. 5,000 acres, river frontage, lakes, 400-year-old longleaf pine, a plentitude of wildlife and wild quail, a collection of unparalleled architecture and amenities, all less than two miles from historic Thomasville. A rare gem of land and forest, the original role model plantation for burning, quail management, and preservation. Greenwood is here, thriving. And now, after nearly two centuries of legacy owners, 
The Green Tree Foundation is turning to John Kohler and Associates to lead the search for Greenwood's next owner. It is a testament to John's commitment to preserving the land and traditions of the Red Hills. Greenwood's next chapter is filled with opportunity, one that has not been available for generations, and one that will not be available for long. Greenwood is one of the finest private estates in the country. It's truly an honor for John Kohler & Associates to be part of finding the next great steward of this fine property.